everybody. We're back here with Senator Kamala Harris. You've joined protests in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, first of all, did you wear a mask? I did, but I will tell you the first protest I, I ever attended with, in a stroller um, when my parents were marching in the 60s. So it's kind of something I've done my entire life. Yeah. I, I, I know that your, your, your mom was very uh, yeah. politically active. What did you learn from her? I learned that, that the greatest movements that, have, that we have seen in recent history in our country, but probably since the beginning, have been born out of protest, have been born out of understanding the power of the people to take to the streets and force their government to, to become, to, to, to address what is wrong, the inequities, the inequalities, the unfairness, but also the conscience of a government is its people to force the government to, to, to be true to the ideals that we say we hold dear. And almost every one of those marches has been about one fundamental ideal in our country, which is equal justice under law and fighting to make sure we have a government in a country that at least every you know few steps gets closer to achieving that ideal. We've not yet reached it. We've never actually reached it. But these protests, I think, are the, the catalyst to getting there. What did you see in D.C.? What, what, did it, what was it like to, to, yeah. to march in those protests? You know, it was, um, I'll tell you one of the things, Stephen, that I saw that gives me such hope. Uh, people who seemingly have nothing in common, who, who know they have everything in common. It was really, it's a beautiful sight. People of every race, age, gender, together and, and seeing the commonality. And, and it, it was then the commonality of spirit. And it was something that was so very powerful and i think we all have to recognize it for what it is there is we have arrived at, at at a point in our country that we should recognize this is not just a moment it is a movement it is a movement that is fueled by the the diversity the beautiful diversity of who we are coming together as a unified body uh, demanding in this case change and justice for everyone as a, as a senator, as a politician, someone who has to respond to the constituents, what do these protests mean to the ability to affect change yeah. legislatively? Because I, the reason yeah. I ask is because yeah. I woke up this morning, I looked down at that we do like a news breakdown at night, news breakdown in the morning, mm -hmm. I looked at everything, I went, where's the report on the protests? Yeah. Well, are, are they gone? Are we not just talking about them anymore? Because it, it seems to me it has to be sustained in order to maintain the pressure and to maintain that commonality of purpose for people of all races in the United States to bring this kind of justice that's being called for. How important is it for these protests to continue? It's critically important. And I'm going to tell you something. I made a very conscious decision to become a prosecutor. I grew up in a community that was not always on the, the, the best end of law enforcement in terms of how the laws were applied. There's not a black man I know, be he a relative or a friend, who has not been the subject of some form of racial profiling or excessive force. So when I made a decision to become a prosecutor, it was a conscious decision, which was to go inside the system and, and have some leverage there to effectuate change. I say that to say this, the only way we're going to truly achieve change is when there are people in the system who are willing or pushing to do it and when there are those folks who are outside of the system demanding it i am very clear that some of the success that we've been able to achieve around criminal justice reform would not have happened in recent years were it not for black lives matter and the the intensity and the brilliance of that movement that forced at least that, that there would be some counterforce to the status quo, which is so reluctant for change, if not hostile to change. That's what these movements do. That where these systems are so invested and ingrained in what they call tradition, but is status quo, often which can be wrongheaded, these movements provide a counterforce to get us to where we need to be. So even what some might call weak tea proposals by the Republicans right now wouldn't be happening if there weren't these protests in the I'm streets. sure of it. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. And it's tragic because the reality is that these, these protests have been happening in maybe smaller form for generations. But let's just look at where we are right now and 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 acknowledge to your point yeah had these protests had people by the hundreds of thousands not been out there marching many who might be relatives of those very people 
who have been obstructionists until now, um, we probably wouldn't be where we are. But again, back to where we are, what the Republicans are proposing is, is by many accounts, and certainly by my account, absolutely insufficient to meet this moment. And we need to go with the, with the justice and policing bill. Uh, and I, I want to make clear that I, I know that there are protests still happening in yes. major cities across the United States. I'm just not seeing the reporting on it that I, that right, I had that's right. for the first few weeks. That's um, right. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's, they're not, this is a movement, I'm telling you. They're not going to stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not going to stop. It is gonna, they're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not, and we should not. Senator, we have to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, we'll have more with Senator Harris and ask if she has any interest in being a vice presidential candidate.